Hi and welcome along to probably quite a brief video about the uh, amazing Hertzsprung Russell diagram. Thanks a lot to the students who I think were in group A. I've stolen a couple of your slides um, just to get me started. So here we go, here's a Hertzsprung Russell diagram. Now the key thing about the Hertzsprung Russell diagram is that um, when it was first conceived, people thought if they plotted the luminosity, so when we say absolute magnitude, that's a measure of how bright the stars are um, against their temperature, then we would get a random distribution of stars. But it turns out that the vast majority of stars are on this broad kind of sausage region kind of called the main sequence. The uh, then people started to think that maybe stars moved along the main sequence. We now know right. um, that Can that's not true. These are the stars in the stable the part of their life when they're converting burning hydrogen the into helium. The uh, there's a few things to notice about the axes here. The exam board are fairly keen that you can draw this from memory. So it's often kind of comes up as a four marker. Um, so the brightest stars up here are absolute magnitude minus 10. The dimmest stars are down here, an absolute magnitude of 15. Temperature scale, as you can see here, goes from 50,000 to 2,500. So we, what we're looking at here, O, B, A, F, G, K, and M. Those are the stellar classifications you've already met with the temperature boundaries that you've already met. You might be wondering, uh, in fact, I hope you are wondering, why on earth is this diagram the wrong way around? Why have we got high temperature on the left and low temperature on the right? That's because um, the diagram is sufficiently old that we didn't fully understand black body radiation when it was created. Um, so, in fact, this was a wavelength diagram with long wavelength on the right and short wavelength on the left. Once they realised they could convert that to temperature, um, the, the kind of diagram never got moved back. The other thing, so you need to be able to um, identify on here the main sequence and draw that from memory. Got the giants and the supergiants, you need to be able to locate those. Those are stars later in their life cycles, which have expanded. And then the old ruminants after um, a nova explosion of these white dwarfs down here. Um, you can kind of apply a bit of the basic physics of stars here. So what we see here is um, very, very hot stars, but with very low power output, and that's because they've got very small surface area. So despite having a large surface, uh, despite being very hot, they don't radiate very much radiation. Up here, these, these big stars up here, they um, uh, have a huge power output, but at low temperature, and that's, that, that's why we know that they're big. You can see the sun here. The sun is a class G star. Um, uh, you can see that just about lines up in G and its magnitude is about 4.8, which is about five. And what you need to know is that at some point in the future, it will expand up and move up into the red giants. And then eventually after a Nova explosion, it will move down to the white dwarfs. So that's pretty much everything you need to know about the Hertzsprung Russell.